Wednesday's lethal force by Cincinnati police remains under investigation. But from everything seen so far, the chief and the mayor believe officers acted appropriately and within their training. What you saw um, a couple days ago, we train those, ex uh, those exact incidents. Fred Gilmore has been training recruits for 10 years, and while taking care to speak in generalities and not about the specifics of the Paul Gaston shooting, he and Training Academy Commander Russ Neville emphasize there's but one opportunity to make the right life or death decision. You know, we don't have the opportunity to distinguish between a functional or non-functional firearm. We don't have the opportunity to distinguish between pellet gun and a 9mm or a 38. Chief Isaac showed a picture Thursday of the airsoft pellet gun he says Gaston started to pull from his waistband, as well as a picture of the truck police say Gaston had wrecked just moments before. Last night, his girlfriend, who wanted her identity concealed, told us... He was drunk. He was. He had been drinking. And he had just had an accident. I'm not trying to justify him not listening, but I'm pretty sure that played a major role in it. The only video is from a cell phone inside the car of a witness behind Gaston. At the training academy, the constant is an emphasis of eyes on hands. There's nobody in that grouping or that setting that wants a peaceful resolution any more than that police officer. And it is so much dictated on the action of the party that we are encountering. And Chief Isaac said it was Gaston's reach into his waistband that resulted in the use of deadly force. Investigators say there are more than 20 witnesses they are talking to about the fatal encounter around this time some 48 hours ago. Live at District 1, John London, WWT News 5. All right, John.